It's Friday, November 19th, 2010, and you're watching This Week in Linux News. I'm going to throw out some apologies in advance. There was so much news this week, I meant to make two videos. I'm actually going to do one tonight with all of the Linux-related news, and one tomorrow with all of the tablet and Android-related news, because there's so much of it. But let's go ahead and jump into the Linux news. So you've been using Linux for a little while now, I'll assume. Maybe you're new to it. When you put your system under a lot of load, you probably notice that a lot of things just stop responding decently. Well, a new patch that's being integrated into the kernel looks to fix all of that. A new patch for the kernel has been introduced that's said to decrease latency time under maximum load up to 10 times and under average desktop load up to 60 times. This is said to improve web browsing speed, network performance, tons and tons of different things. Pharonix.com did some coverage of it. They actually made a couple of videos showing before and after the performance that they were getting. On the before, they've got something compiling and they try to play a video, Big Buck Bunny from the Blender Foundation. It doesn't want to play. After they've applied the patch, they try compiling something again, doing the same exact thing. They try playing the video, it plays smoothly. Web pages also scroll smoother, all sorts of wonderful things can be done with this. In another bout of awesome though, in addition to this patch, someone figured out that you can do the same thing without having to apply a patch to your system right now. The commands to do that are available on webupdate.org, I'll have the link to that in the source code in the show notes below. I tested this out on my Ping iOS laptop earlier. It did seem to have a little bit of a performance improvement, but I wasn't really taxing the system all that much. Web pages were definitely scrolling smoother. But according to Linus, he wants to go ahead and push this into the kernel so that all desktops, all distros, everyone will get it. You won't have to rely upon one distro or another, making sure to include that for the default user. Moving right along to some more awesomeness, VLC version 1.1.5 released this week. With this release, there are some bug fixes, some codec updates, they've added support for .webm streaming, but the coolest feature that I see about it is the ability to view thousands of channels online through channels.com using the player itself. If you add a PPA to your Ubuntu system or install it whatever way you've got it on your other system, you can go ahead and check this out by going into View, Playlist, and clicking on Internet. I believe my videos are actually syndicated on channels.com as well, so I'm going to have to go check it out after this and just see how they work. And speaking of releases, Mandriva's announced that they're not dying in the water like a lot of people seem to think. They've got two releases in the works right now. Version 2010.2 is scheduled to release on December 22nd. That will be, of course, their second release for the year 2010. After that, right after the new year, they're going to get started on the alphas for version 2011. And the final release of Mandriva 2011 should come sometime in late May, right after Ubuntu 11.04 comes out, right after Fedora 15 comes out. So basically this is some excellent news if you're a Mandriva fan who wasn't terribly excited about the idea of moving to a new distro when Magia becomes available. As a reminder, Magia is the fork of Mandriva that's being created by the former Mandriva developers. And let's move on to a little bit of Ubuntu news that's not necessarily good news. John O'Bacon posted on his blog that they have no plans to create a Maverick PPA for the Unity and Compiz that are going to be available in Ubuntu 11.04. There are lots and lots of reasons. Basically, a lot of it stems back to the idea of having to replace the existing Compiz and the possibility of people losing their existing desktop to a new one that may not work 100%. It is, of course, possible that someone could create a PPA, but it would not be an official, canonical sanctioned one. If you feel up to it, by all means, go for it, but 11.04 will have it, so I wouldn't worry about it, honestly. Now let's talk a little bit about Zeitgeist. Now I'll admit, I don't know a ton about it at this point. I know it's supposed to be used in Gnome Shell, it's supposed to be used in Unity. Well, basically, up to this point, it's been a bit slow, but it does aggregate a ton of data for you. When you start searching for something in one of these newer interfaces, it's what actually does the search for you and brings back all the results. Well, according to the developers, it was not working as fast as it should be, so they've done some tweaks to it and made it multiple times faster. I should have done that little air quotes, multiple times faster. In addition, they've added some new data sources, some new plugins for it, like Eye of Gnome and Totem and Rhythmbox and some other things like that. So there's just some more places it can pull data from to give you results. It's also been decided that it's going to be integrated into Gnome Shell when it finally releases. And they brought Amigo developer on board to help them integrate Zeitgeist into a future release of Amigo. Like I said, I haven't had a ton of time to use it, but the little bit that I've used it, it's actually a really interesting project. I look forward to seeing it when Unity comes out, look forward to seeing it with Gnome Shell, hopefully with Migo. 
And for a little bit of really cool news, something that's interesting to me as a bit of a gamer, there's a plugin available now for your browser called Burster. Burster is a combined effort from iTechnology and the Blender Foundation to make a 3D plugin for your browser to make gaming available within the web browser. Now since Burster is being backed by the Blender Foundation, it of course works with Blender technologies. So if you've got a game that's being developed using Blender that runs using OpenGL, it should work very nicely in this with just a bit of work getting it to go over to the web side. And the really good news, they say that at the moment almost all NVIDIA and ATI cards should work with it, and basically if your card supports OpenGL, it should work with this Burster plugin. The downside of course, there's only one game I know of that actually works with this plugin, but it does open a doorway to a whole new web browsing, game playing experience. And let's end things with some Open Connect news. As we talked about last week, the libfreenet driver is now available and developers have gotten their hands into it. A couple of developers decided they were going to make a shadow puppet application. So basically you stand in front of a wall, you put your hand in front of the connect and you move it in a certain way, and it controls a little shadow puppet, but it's not really a shadow puppet. It's kind of a 3D model of a bird that's interactive and it it's interesting. Take a look at it. I'll have a link to the video in the source code below. And what's even cooler, in my opinion, a developer took an application called Tish, which is kind of like the Microsoft Surface thing where you can move things around with your hands. Well, basically he connected that to the libfreenect and to the Connect device and made sort of a photo browser where you can move things around on a virtual desktop, resize things with multi-touch, it's really interesting. Well, that's all I've got for you today. I will be putting out another video tomorrow based around Android and tablets and stuff, but this one's going to be long enough as it is. So I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.